My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel. Today, well, we just wrapped up WWDC this past week, and as an app developer myself, it was a very busy and exciting week, but I wanted to go through and show you what it looks like is gonna come with iOS 14 in the Apple Home app and the Shortcuts app this fall, based on the first betas that Apple released this week, and just see how much easier it is to manage your HomeKit smart home from in this case, an iPad, but a lot of this also applies to the iPhone. And I think, you know, when it comes to first party apps from a smart home vendor that then allow you to manage all your accessories and automations, HomeKit and the Home app on iOS is just by far and away the best, especially when you compare it to things like the Amazon Alexa app and uh, Google Nest Homes app as well. Now, it's important to note that this is what's probably coming, this is the first beta, so some of the stuff that I call out or critique might evolve over the summer. And then right after this, I'm gonna close it out with some of the exciting features coming this fall for HomeKit. All right, so side by side here, we have the Home app in iOS 13 and then the Home app in iOS 14. And one of the things that could, strikes me right off the bat is way better use of screen space here on the iPad. Look at all of this space here that's just not used on the main screen of the Home app that because of the sidebar in iOS 14 is just, it's, it's a much better layout. And because of the sidebar as well, it's way faster for me to get to different rooms. Again, we're looking at the same home on each iPad. Uh, just this is a different Apple ID that's been given full permissions in the home, and then this is the parent of the home Apple ID account. Um, so then here I can just go to any of these different rooms and then fully control any of the accessories uh, very quickly from the sidebar, whereas here I have to go to the rooms tab at the bottom and then tap this long drop down, which is just extra taps and annoying. Um, another thing that I really like the concept of is this new way to show home status. So if you're not familiar, when you add an accessory to HomeKit, you can say whether you want it to be shown in status. And that's true right now if you just go to any, uh, the settings of any, uh, if you go to the settings of any accessory, you can choose include in status. And that will show you um, that accessory in the status of the home. And so in iOS 13, it's this like paragraph of text, which then you can tap and see a summary of the tiles. The uh, iOS 14 way is sort of these compressed tiles that are like these little circles. Now, my one complaint is I don't have any idea when it just says outlet on what outlet it actually is. So hopefully they'll fix that in a future beta. This is only beta one. Um, so, you know, this is not final stuff, but I really like that um, I can quickly go in here and turn off that outlet if I wanted the printer to be off. Um, and then I can also, you know, see that a fan is on. Again, I don't know where that fan is from there, but I can tap in here and see the details of this ceiling fan in the master bedroom. And I can turn it off if I want to, so I can just tap that and it will turn it off, which is great. And then I can just tap again and turn it back on. Um, and it also shows me the status of motion sensor. So I have a motion sensor in the entryway of my home and there's motion there right now. So it's showing that it's being triggered. Um, I also have the security system status right here as well. So I can uh, tap in here to the different security systems I happen to have on my HomeKit home and then change the status from there. So uh, that's always nice to have that quick access now right here, which uh, again is less taps and it's faster to see this visual status, but it is, you know, I don't have as clear idea what these lights are right now, um, where I might have in the old description. So I hope they can kind of tweak these icons to show what rooms they're in. So then going in here to automation, uh, you have that tab again, it's the same tab that was over here on the side in iOS 13 is now over here in iOS 14. Um, now it's faster to get to, but it doesn't look like much has changed in terms of the triggers. 
specifically in home automations. Now, there's a whole lot of stuff you can do on your device with Siri shortcuts coming in iOS 14 with triggers, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but this hasn't really changed much, at least in this beta one. Um, now I can quickly go into any of these rooms and tap, and again, one of the other cool things is if I go, let's say, to the master bedroom here in iOS 13, if it will let me tap, there we go, master bedroom. Uh, it's nice to see this status here, but at the same time, unless you have, you know, they've added this status here in iOS 14, but unless you have like, you know, hundreds of accessories in a room, I don't see why surfacing at the top really helps that much uh, because you're already able to see a number of the tiles here. The other great improvement, speaking of the room view, is that you have the home icon accessible here. So in iOS 13, you could only go to that home icon if you were on this main home screen as opposed to any of the rooms. And here I can then quickly get to the room settings, which is this, uh, the same as if I went into edit and then room settings here in iOS 13. But um, I can also quickly get to the home settings. So that's really nice. And then I can also uh, quickly access the edit mode from there. So they've sort of moved the edit mode, <coughs> excuse me, from in uh, this button here that says edit, and it's under this universal home menu. So, you know, maybe a little less discoverable, but probably not too bad. And I think that editing, I don't know what the actual statistics on usage are, but I bet that's not used nearly as much. People kind of get their tiles arranged and they're done with it. Whereas accessing those settings, can be something you might refer back to often. So again, this just came out this week. This is beta one. I haven't had a ton of time to play with this, but I'm very excited about the new sidebar in the home app. And I think that layout going across iPad OS, especially in the home app, will make it a lot easier to get to your things. And I think the new status, well, it might not be completely clear right now what's going on with individual items. It's easy to get there and deal with the status right there. Because frequently I use this status on the home when I'm getting ready to go to bed and I just wanna double check and make sure all the scenes and everything are set and I can go in here and control that. But with the home app in iOS 14, it'll be one less step. I don't have to tap into that status. I can just tap the accessories here and you know I can just, boom, turn the lights off. So going into shortcuts here, uh, you can see that the sidebar is there and that just adds a lot of quick access to things just like the home app. So a similar style redesigned there. And they've also made the tiles a lot brighter in iOS 14, which I really like. But specifically what I wanna focus on right now is if I go to add a new automation, so we're gonna go and create a personal automation, which means it's a shortcuts based automation that runs on that device. Um, in iOS 13, you had a number of different triggers you could already do, like, uh, an alarm or a time of day arriving in home before I commute, you know, when Wi-Fi turns on or off or other things. One of the challenges though, is that if I went in here and say wanted to do a time of day, I couldn't, um, I had to confirm it when it actually ran. And in this case, if I go in here, I don't have to actually confirm this shortcut. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna go through and actually create the shortcut, but the beauty is you can run shortcuts at a time of day and you don't have to do anything for those to run. Um, there's also some other really cool features like you can, um, that you don't have in iOS 13, but you have in 14, you can run shortcuts when you get an email from somebody or when you get an, a message from somebody uh, as well as, you know, some of the existing ones like Wi-Fi network, but you also have um, something cool for home automation maybe, which is when your iPhone or whatever device it is goes onto a charger or reaches a certain battery level. So, um, you know, maybe if you just put your phone on a charger at night, you could use that to run a scene in your home if your current location is near home in the shortcut or something. So a lot of cool opportunities there. Again, I've been very busy as a developer with WWDC this week. I haven't really played with all the details here in shortcuts, but I did want to mention it here that, you know, managing your home in the home app is great, but there we're also getting some new goodies and shortcuts. And while a lot of them are focused on personal automations, I think that they're going to make a lot of uh, just 
triggering and controlling your smart home from your iOS devices. It's just gonna be that much easier and that much more flexible with some of these. And you know, you might not have to be tapping as many NFC stickers around your home just to get what you want to happen. So beyond just the app for iPhone and iPad, there's also enhanced integration coming to the Apple TV where you'll be able to see your HomeKit cameras on the Apple TV and you'll be able to, if someone rings a doorbell that's HomeKit enabled, that will like post a video notification on the TV while you're watching something. I mean, I don't know how often I'm gonna be watching Apple TV while someone also comes to my door, but it really is a cool magic trick and I like that Apple's doing things like that just to bring all of their home ecosystem closer together. They're also bringing me something that I've requested. I mean, of course, it's just because they're watching this channel and doing everything that I say. Uh, that last year when I reviewed the LifeX Day and Dusk bulbs, I was upset about the lack of dynamic lighting in HomeKit. And it's really nice to see that coming where you're basically gonna have night shift for lights. Uh, it doesn't seem to be in this first beta or maybe I'd have to also upgrade like my HomePod HomeKit hub, I don't know. but. Um, they mentioned it in the keynote, and so I'm excited to see what happens there. Basically, they'll take uh, smart bulbs that can change color, and they'll dynamically shift the color so you get a more yellow light later in the evening as an optional setting uh, for those lights. I really hope they also apply this to light dimmers so that if you've installed a dimmer switch, it will like, you know, almost like back in the day with the iPod, you could put a limit on the volume and you can still do that on your iPhone. Like if they would sort of after a certain hour, you could put like a limit on all the dimmers. So like they can, all the dimmers in your house can only get up to like 80% whenever you turn them on. You can sort of hack that with doing an automation where it's like, after this time, when I turn this light to 100%, turn it back down to 80%, but it would be really nice to see that elegantly supported with this feature at some point, maybe even in the first release, we'll see. So just yesterday, as I post this video, I also updated my website. So you can go check out my website, ericwheelander.com. You can see now I'm starting to add blog posts there, not only for when I post new videos, but all kinds of other content as well. So I'm trying to build out the blog plus the YouTube channel. So go check out ericwheelander.com if that's something you're interested in. There'll be a link down in the description. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.